The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the fantastic Friday, the November 1st edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Now let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, Stevie's got your back. You can send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we begin our day with a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that you and I track, they are trading to the upside. Dow's up a little over 1% or 478 points, about 1% for the S&P, 54 points there, 1% for the NASDAQ 100, 207 points, 1% for the Russell, 20 points, 1.5% for the semis. That's a move of about 72 points. The tranny's up 1 and 2 tenths percent, 189 points there. Gold's up four dollars and fifty cents. Trade out at twenty-seven fifty-four. Silver is flat at thirty-two seventy-eight. Natural gas is up three cents. Thirty-year Treasury is down nearly one point, print out one seventeen oh two. And light sweet crude is up eighty-six pennies. Trade out at seventy twelve. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside today are Waters Corp up fifty-eight bucks, eighteen percent. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals forty-seven bucks, eighteen percent. Charter Communications forty-two bucks, thirteen percent. Atlassian Corp up 29 bucks, 15%. And McKesson Corp is up at about 25 as well. That's a 5% move there. Our shakers to the downside led by Onto Innovation, down 19 bucks, 10%. Lending Tree, 9 bucks, 15%. Reddit off seven bucks, six percent. Carvana off about seven bucks, nearly three percent there. And Eli Lilly off seven bucks. That's a little bit less than one percent move to the downside. So what do you want to begin looking at? Why don't we go take a look at advanced client oscillator? It's in that extreme or wasn't that extreme uh, oversold condition. I'm sure we're still there. Maybe working that condition off. If we take a look at this here, yeah, you can see we closed below the minus 150 level out there. Now, what I can share with you is that I don't have the chart handy, I believe, but the New York Stock Exchange, during the break, I'll try to remember to bring that up. I believe the New York Stock Exchange is going to go ahead and form a TD9 count bottom today. That pattern will complete tomorrow. That's really in line. We'll take a look at the upper portion of the chart is the New York Stock Exchange. The center for the second portion is the advanced decline line of the New York Stock Exchange. The third area is the advanced decline oscillator. That's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average out there. So with a bottom pattern on the daily time frame for the New York Stock Exchange, for me today, completed on Monday, it looks to me like this oversold condition will end up being worked off. Now, if we take a look at the spot fix index, still well above its 50-day exponential moving average. Uh, the 50-day is currently printed at 1891. Uh, we are trading right now at 2168 out there. We really need a close below the 50-day exponential moving average in order for these markets to really have some momentum to the upside. Short of that, I would say we're in choppy conditions as we speak right now. Uh, what else can I share with you here? Let's see where we trade in in relationship to Apogee out here. 
The only thing that's really threatening to possibly deal with its apogee pivot point would be the U.S. dollar index. And that's up at the 104.12 level. We can see that that has acted as resistance on rallies, uh, the last three rally attempts, quite frankly, using a 30-minute time frame to take a look at that. So nothing else here. So why don't we go ahead and move on. And let's move on and take a look at the uh, white background charts. So let's start there. Give me a moment. And we're going to take a look at the daily equity future contract charts first. As I had mentioned, the New York Stock Exchange has got a TD9 count bottom pattern. If we take a look at these four future contracts, it is the Dow that is likely going to complete a TD9 count bottom or confirm a TD9 count bottom today. Now, in order to do that, it must close below today, that is, 42.606, and we're at 42.424. So that pattern could go away, but if it closes below that level that I gave you, 42.6, hold on a minute here, close, 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 42.606. If we get a close above that, this pattern will go away. Of course, price will be back inside its bullish structured profile, and then it would go target the 42.813 level. As we look at the other three daily time frame charts out here, the ES Mini, if it closes below the bottom of its profile, the bottom of the profile being the 5802 area, if it closes below that, then odds favor that we're on our way down to 5470. That will give us a profile change in trend. No other signal, their topping pattern per se that's there, but that is a, a topping signal if we get a profile change in trend. In the case of the NQ out here, and John wants to take a look at the NQ for support, resistance levels. Well, John, right now, the key area here is going to be 2135.75. If price closes above that today, it says yesterday's move below its bullish structured profile was a false move to the downside. Uh, right now, the next resistance point is the center of its profile out here. Again, yeah, we're looking at the daily time frame. The center of that profile is at the 2291 and a quarter level, the top at 252450. I know you probably want more than that, and I'll give you more than that. Uh, if I take a look at the Russell 2000, no real pattern here. If price were to close today, I would say below 220650, that would trigger an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. So those would be the areas to watch on the daily time frame charts for the equity future contracts. So I'm going to go ahead and close this off, just to grab a few more resources out there. We'll come back to gold. But let's continue on with the uh, intraday charts here for the ES Mini as an example. So the ES Mini, well, you know what we're going to do? Yesterday, we had a spot fix index that closed above the 10-day, uh, th that closed above the one-day rate of change above plus 10% out there. And I shared that with you yesterday, so watch that. And then I suggest that if you watch that and we do get a close above that, we're likely to see a bottom. Now, I'm uh, at least a bounce attempt, a bounce or a bottom. Now, what I shared with you is the best tool to uh, ident identify that bottom is the Rhodes Mentum Indicator Signal. When all four 30-minute future contracts have that as the bottom signal, you usually get quite a rally. And that's, in fact, what happened. Now, in the case of the Dow, as an example, its bottom signal came in yesterday morning. You and I, we took a look at that at 1130. That was that Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. In the case of the uh, Russell 2000, that bottom pattern came in right here at 4 o'clock this morning. We had a trigger that was signaled at uh, 2230 last night. Here in the NQ, that confirmation came with that bullish reversal candle, the hammer at 2230, and then we just simply took off from there. In the case of the uh, uh, ES Mini, it was 2230 as well. That road's meant to indicator signal. Now, on a 10-minute basis, these TD9 count patterns have been negated, with the exception being the Russell 2000. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a further look at the ES and the NQ for its multi-time frame charts. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're going to dive down into the uh, NASDAQ uh, 100 out there, the NQs. But before I do that, um, what I wanted to share with you, because I think, you know, part of the question as we go take a look at those stock charts is trying to identify whether we're going to form any kind of a top or not out here. Now, what I have on our screen is, uh, and I'm referring to the day, just simply from a day trading standpoint. We look at the screen here. This is a correlation tool that I have. And the correlation setting that I use right now is a three-day correlation. It's a spot. It's as short of a time frame as I can get. And what the uh, bottom bars are taking a look at is the two instruments that are up top, that being the DAX in panel number one, the NDX in panel number two. And panel number two is the correlation between those two. When bars are above zero, and you don't see a zero line out there. I mean, if you look in the right, um, you can see zero, but I don't have a, a yellow line or any kind of line that goes above that. But so lines that are moving to the upside or bars to the upside, I should say, and bars to the downside. When bars are moving to the upside, that tells you about a directional correlation. One moves higher, the other moves higher. And you can see, and certainly you can say this, from the from the trading session that began in July of 2024, this is a daily time frame, we have basically been directionally correlated over a three-day period. Strong directional correlation. Why is that important? The DAX is going to close in about 11 minutes. And the DAX right now is up at its session high. Uh, it may back off a little bit, may back off. I'm, I'm not saying that it will out here, but the DAX is going to close at its session high. So what do you think odds favor that the NDX 100 is going to do? Are you in a camp that the NDX 100 is going to go ahead and sell off as soon as the uh, German DAX closes? It's possible, but I don't think so. Now with this directional correlation that's out there. So when you ask me, John C., about the uh, taking a look at the NQ out there, really we had to begin by taking a look at this to understand that correlation and understand what the DAX is doing. Now we'll switch over to my eight panel charts out here, and we're going to see the actual DAX activity. Uh, and if you look at the bottom panel out here, you see a 30-minute TD9 count pattern is going to go ahead and form as we come into the 1130 time frame. 
If we take a look at the 65-minute uh, time frame chart, it's in bar number eight right now. Potential for some kind of a top. The 130-minute chart says, I don't know what you're talking about as far as tops. You got a nice TD9 count bottom on that 195-minute uh, chart. Why 195-minute? When you take a look at an index or a cash uh, or you take a look at a, a stock, a cash industry or stock. You've got six and a half hours of trading out there. You should really divide uh, the six and a half hours to get an equally sized bar. Turns out there's 295 minute bars in a trading day. There's 330 minute bars. So you kind of get the picture here. So you get a nice TD9 out bottom with price above that red oscillator and change line. That says a further rally could certainly take place. We don't have any kind of a topping signal on the yearly time frame. We've got a TD9 count top for the monthly. We have a TD9 count top for the weekly. We have a Roach Mentum Indicator top for the daily time frame chart. This may just be a two-day counter trend move to the upside out there. But the most important thing is to take a look at the DAX. It doesn't look to me like it's going to do much other than close up at its session highs. So I'm going to go ahead and close those charts out. Uh, for those of you that do trade the uh, NQ, it makes sense as far as I'm concerned, for you to get access to the uh, DAX. You don't have to trade the DAX, but understand what's going on in its multi time frame charts and see if that assists you with your trading. Now we're actually going to go take a look at the NQ, its multi time frame charts here. Now these, I use different time frames. We're trading nearly 24 hours a day out here. Uh, here is the uh, NQ. And we take a look at its intraday charts out here, just to start with. Um, don't have my, I don't have really a, any kind of a top to speak of on a 10 minute time frame, a 15 minute time frame, a 30 minute time frame, a 60 minute time frame, and the two hour time frame chart, we now get into bar number nine. This candle is going to go ahead and complete at 12 noon. So, what we do know is on a two hour time frame basis, you will have a confirmed TD9 count top at 12 noon. What we also know is that pattern won't complete until 2 p.m. out there, so we could still continue to move higher with that topping signal still in place out here. Now, will we move higher? Well, the real answer comes between the four hour and the five hour time frame charts, I, I think, John. On the five hour time frame chart, I'm just simply going to expand this out. We can see that prices rally right up into that red oscillator and change line. So, this is a very key level of resistance, this being 2264. If price were to close above that on a five hour basis, right now, this candle is going to complete at 2 p.m. But if we do close above that, that's going to suggest a further rally. This would be a profile change in trend. We'd be closing above that red oscillator and change line. It's next price target, not saying that it'll get there, but it's next level of resistance would be 2699.50. Now, when we look at the four hour time frame chart, what do we see out here? Here we see a TD9 count bottom. So I like a chart that shows a top or a bottom. And then when we really analyze what it's doing, I think those charts would give us the better piece of information. So here we can see that price is above that red oscillator and change line. This candle closed at 2 p.m. And this says that it closed above its profile level. Uh, this is the resistance at 22.54, even Stephen. That would suggest a further rally. Now, it's further rally suggests 27.54. Again, I'm not saying that that's where price is going to go, but that would certainly be, from a technical standpoint, its price target. Lastly, when we take a look at the daily time frame, we've already covered this. As long as price closes above 21.35.75, there's nothing wrong here. We did close below profile support yesterday, but price gets back above it, and that says that yesterday's move could have been, at least would be, a false breakdown to the uh, downside out there. So that's what's going on when I take a look at the NQ out there. John, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. Um, you were asking as well, you asked another question, can I discuss what happens if the VIX goes below minus 10%? I can and I will, and I will change the uh, screens. So we're going to go back to the uh, black background screens. A very nice question. Uh, that's not the chart that's going to pop up right now, but we'll get back to that set of charts out there. VIX primary. Okay, so if you take a look at this chart here, the top horse is the S&P 500 because what the VIX is doing is dealing with the S&P options out here. So we want to keep everything consistent. If we take a look at the bottom panel of the screen, that shows you your one-day rates of change of either above plus 10% or below minus 10%. The green arrows represent what you're asking about, which is what happens if we get a one-day rate of change below minus 10%. Typically, that leads to initiation to higher price. The last time we had that example was back here on September the 9th. If we take a look at the time before that, it was on August the 6th, where my cursor is at. If we take a look at the time before that, 
That was in the trading session of uh, July 26. That led to higher price for about four or five days. If we take a look at the uh, one that occurred before that, May 31st, that led to quite a nice rally. When, in fact, it took us new all-time highs out there. Now, if we take a look at this one right here, this one did not work. That was October 16th. We had a rally the following day. I don't know if there's any kind of a topping signal out there or not. But you can see that one didn't work. If I come back and take a look at the one that worked prior to that, uh, and that was right here on the trading day of um of June the 1st out there, that certainly led to a rally. So what you can see is, boy, when you get those moves below minus 10% out there, you can see how the odds favor being to the long side, not being to the short side. But like every tool out there, I've still not found a tool that um, works 100% of the time. I'm not saying that it it, it, well, not saying that there's not one that's out there, but if there is, would you please call into the show or at least write me at steve at tfnn.com because that indicator, well, that would be a beautiful thing. So that's what happens when we get to a one-day rate of change below minus 10%, John. So that covers the NQ. That covers the VIX. We come back from this break. We're going to take a look at CrowdStrike for Roger B., Microsoft for Roger B., GE for Nicholas, NIO, and Asher, ASHR for GTE. And, of course, I would love to hear from you as well. We'll be right back. trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com.
InvestingintheFunds.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, and folks. We're taking a look at the crowd strike here is for Roger B. He'd like to add to his position. So let's look at the long term chart. What uh, a crowd strike has done. So when it formed a high out here, it was a roach momentum indicator top on a monthly base back in November of 2021. Price pulls back. I can't tell you why it uh, bottomed where it did. That was in January of 2023. But the very next um, the very next uh, month in February, we got a new bullish structured profile, and you got a profile change in trend out here in June of 2023. That led to four Forming a sell the D point top on a monthly basis that formed in July of 2024. When you form a top, all that really entitles you to do is go and test support. Now, maybe you can break through support, but really, it's all it's telling you that it wants to do is really go ahead and test support. In this case, here, uh, when it was forming that Rhodes momentum indicator top, it also closed below the green oscillator and change line. So it had told us immediately in one month's time that CrowdStrike would have done its loss of momentum, formed a top, and would go test the next level of support. That's where these profiles really come into play. Well, if we take a look at what it did, it actually got down into, was that a buy zone or is that the top of its profile? That was at the top of its profile, 199.07. The actual low out there came in on August of 2024, and that was down at the 200.81 level. Still qualifies as testing and rejecting that support level. Now on a monthly basis, Roger, price is above that green oscillator and change line. And you'd love to see it stay above that because that tells you on a monthly time frame, the larger picture, you have a rising price oscillator above zero. End of story. That is a bullish signal out there. Of course, we have to go take a look at what's going on inside the weekly time frame chart. Why did it bottom where it did? I don't know. That was in August. Out here on this chart that we're looking at, August 9th, that is. Actually, I do know, right? That's August 9th. That's the week. Take a look at the TD9 count bottom all the way back here on August the uh, 6th. That uh, uh, August the 5th, that formed out here. Nice TD9 count bottom. So we know the daily is certainly controlling things here. On a weekly time frame, you like the fact that price is above and you like to see it close the day above 299.57 because then we would be in a nice breakout mode. Now, I see I'm missing something here. Let me, um, uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I want to, uh, I want to load a different template. Sorry about that. But I'm missing that oscillator and change line and I'd really like to know where in the heck that is. Where is the weekly? It should be where it says all weekly. There we go. We should see that line pop up. So really, what you'd really love to see this do on a weekly time frame is close above that. We're not above it right now, it being 303.31. If you got that, then the weekly chart would be in a full bullish breakout mode. Now, we take a look at the daily time frame. That nice TD9 count bottom that we looked at back in the early part of August led to a sell the D point top. Didn't make it all the way up to the top of that profile, uh, up to that uh <laughs> excuse me, projection level, but it was close enough for our work. Now what you have is a consolidation with inside its daily time frame. I'm trying not to sneeze. I'm trying not to sneeze. Okay, I didn't do so so well that first time around, but got it right now. So you're asking where's the where can you add to your position? Finally, Stevie's going to get there. Well, the buy zone in CrowdStrike is between 287.81 and 291.83 out there. Um, with price below the oscillator and change line with inside this profile, it's lost momentum. Uh, we'd have to see, is there anything else that can assist us? Well, if I look at the 30-minute time frame for CrowdStrike, CRWD, formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom, nice TD9 count bottom. Price is above its breakdown, resists at 301.93. Looks like it wants to rally further. So that's not going to stop today, or doesn't appear to be at least for the 30-minute time frame. On a 65-minute time frame, you've got a TD9 count bottom. That went ahead and confirmed uh, yesterday at 4 p.m. We're trading about profile uh, resistance. I'm not going to worry about the acid and change on. That is still set to the 30-minute time frame, but this is still in a uh, bullish mode out there. So what would you do? What do you do? Why don't you wait until um, Tuesday, election day out there, and not because it's election day, but we can see that the last two rallies that we've had here have been two bar rallies, October 16th and October 17th. And then we've got October 28th and October 29th. 
So this is day one. Maybe we only get a two-bar rally and things start to move to the downside a bit out there. Maybe that gets you back into that daily buy zone. Not guarantee that it will. But uh, since we know what the patterns are with regard to CrowdStrike, I would say the place where you'd be adding is between 287 and 291, unless you were using some intraday chart like we just did, and uh, those have uh, left the station already. So, Roger, hope that helps you out with regard to CrowdStrike. I'll be a little bit quicker here. We take a look at Microsoft. Otherwise, you know, may not get to any other request out there. So we take a look at Microsoft. You're also looking to add to your position. Well, that was really um, yesterday and this morning. 407.70 is the TD9 count breakout level. Granted, yesterday was a close just below it. When I say just below it, yesterday's close was at uh, 406.35. 407.70 was the TD9 count breakout level. Now, what we have is a new profile that is formed above price. That is a bearish message out there. Doesn't mean that it will listen to it, but that says we have overhead supply. So now with regard to Microsoft, you may want to just sit back and wait to see how this plays out. Now, the bottom of the profile, which we're trading below, is at 419.18. The top of the profile at 435 and the center at 425.62 out there. So Microsoft, even though initially we looked at the chart here, we said 407.70 would be the place. But that new profile that's attempting to form gives us pause. If we look at Microsoft on a weekly time frame, it sure likes 404.51 as a support level. That's its TDNAC out breakout area. So that's another possible spot. And if we look at the monthly time frame, the monthly time frame here likely has a sell the beat point top. But let's see if, in fact, it does. The question becomes, where are you going to start your A point for this leg of this A to B equals CD pattern out here? And the answer that Stevie has is, I don't know. I'd probably have to go put it on a quarterly chart to try to see if we had any kind of a turn somewhere. I think as we get to the quarterly charts, I'm on a monthly, I just have to change change the, you know, I'm not going to do that here right now. I'm going to end up screwing something up. So with regard to Microsoft, I'm going to go with we got to sell the D point top up there. Well, certainly what we do have is a Roach Mint Indicator top. That went and formed uh, last month in October. Okay, so we got our top in place out here. In the case of Microsoft, price ought to pull back since below its oscillator and change line. Uh, Roger, it ought to pull back to 382.27. Don't quote me to the penny, but you can use me to the penny. Now, if price were to close below 382.27, then you'd get all the way down to the 321.59 level. So on Microsoft, that daily overhead uh, profile has us uh, uh, taking pause right here. Now, I know you're long. I don't know where you're long from, if it's a real long-term position or what have you, but it just says caution Roger B out there. So thanks for waking, waiting an extra day to uh, get those. Those didn't come until late yesterday, unfortunately. Nicholas wants to take a look at General Electric, GE, and he's looking for a bottom. Well, what we can share with you, Nicholas, is that if price today closes below 175.36, you've got your daily bottom. That would be a TD9 count pattern. Now, it is possible that on Monday, price could pierce below or close below uh, yesterday's low out there. The pattern would still be in place out here. So GE on a daily time frame is giving you a bottom signal. Uh, likely, we're going to see a rally up towards 180.78 out there. Monthly time frame for GE last month confirmed a Roads Mentum Indicator top, just as the weekly has as, as well. But right now, it looks like you're in counter trend mode up to the 180.77 area. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, stock here for a ticker symbol NIO. NEO Inc. is also the uh, name uh, for it. And uh, we're doing this for GTE. Now, GTE, when I take a look at the daily time frame chart, the very first thing that I noticed is there was a TD9 count bottom pattern that had formed on October 17th. And then on the trading day of October 24th, that pattern was negated. The next thing, though, is that price did rally right up into its bear structured profile, 589. And that held. And now we're trading below. We closed below the bottom of its profile yesterday, that profile being 519. We're at 519 right now. The key level to be watching, though, is going to be the low from the trading session of October 24th. If you see a close below 496, then you're going to trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. That A to B equals CD downside pattern would take you towards the $3.25 area out there. So that's the first thing to be watching. On a weekly time frame, price is back inside its profile out there. Could easily move to 489 or 408. Monthly time frame, closed back inside its profile last month. I'm sorry, closed into the buy zone on this instrument last month. Uh, the buy zone is between 421 and 5 and and 5 and 957. I'm sorry, the buy zone is between 421 and 540 out there. So here's what I'd be watching again on Neo. I would just simply be watching that low from the trading session of October 24th. Right now, it's suggesting that low should be challenged. I mean, it's being challenged, if you will. Right now, where the swing is, didn't get all the way down there. But I'd be careful with regard to NIO. Now, this is, we had three days to the downside. So no reason for this not rally for one to two trading sessions out there and then begin its work to the downside one more time out there. If we take a look at the second instrument you requested, this one, we can't get really much of a uh, read on this. Cur clearly... Tons of currency conversion issue here. I believe this is a China uh, stock out there, so we can't use those gaps for anything. I, I really, when I see something like this, it, it I, I really can't make heads or tails out of it. What can I share with you with regard to our technical tools that we have? Well, on the uh, daily time frame, 
you're above profile resistance at 2601, and you're below its oscillator and change line at 2834. No momentum either way out there, just kind of consolidating. The weekly chart, you are trading below the bottom of its profile. Looks to me like that wants to move towards 2649 on a monthly basis. Looked like it was going to be a gigantic breakout last month. Turned out it was nothing more than a test of TD9 count. Breakdown resistance at 2944. So if you couldn't bust it to the upside, it tries to bust it to the downside. I'd watch the 2580 to 2651 level out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at ticker symbol ASHR. Yvonne wrote in, and Yvonne would like to take a look at Google, G-O-O-G -O -O out here. Uh, and she's looking for a buy point. So we take a look at Google. Uh, although we see an A to B equals CD pattern, we don't have any kind of confirmation of that uh, because we don't have a bearish reversal candle. But what we do have out here is a new profile that is forming, formed yesterday. So the resistance level is up at 173.28. We are trading below resistance today. We closed below resistance yesterday. The bottom, the uh, buy area, buy zone, because it's a bullish structured profile, is between 164.87 and 166.97. That's your first clue, Yvonne for Google as to where there may be a buy point or an entry point into the stock. It would be inside that buy zone. If we look at the weekly time frame chart for Google, which bottom with a TD9 count bottom, closed above, uh, uh, we, are, we are trading above, I should say, that green oscillator and change line, but we still found resistance at 174.96. That's the top of its profile. Here's a buy zone as well. And you can see this month we tested that area. That's between 163.94 and 167.61. So you basically have right here from 163.94 up to 166.97, the center of that daily profile out there as your potential buy zones. When we look at the monthly time frame chart, the monthly time frame chart from a Roach momentum indicator top, a TD9 count top, the price pulled back and tested its buy zone. And that was between 137 and 150 out there. We're trading above that green oscillator and change line on a monthly base right now. That suggests that we could easily see a further rally out there. But you're looking for the buy zone. So you're going to have to rely upon the daily time frame chart. Your price were to close above the top of its profile. That, again, is at the 173.28 level. Well, then that would be telling you that price wants to rally further. Um, so what are you going to do out here? I'd say with this being below the top of that daily profile, wait to see if you get a further retracement. Yvonne also wanted to take a look at H double O D out here. So let's go see what's underneath the hood and see if we can find a buy point here. We take a look at hood. Yesterday it confirmed a Roadsman indicator top for its daily time frame. Its breakout level of support is 2272. First clue. First possible buy point would be at the 2272 level. So wait for it to get down there. Now, the weekly chart for Hood has a TD9 count and Roach momentum indicator top. Price right now is pulling back into its sell zone. Now, price had closed above the sell zone for more than two consecutive or, yeah, for three consecutive sessions. What that tells us, Yvonne, if the move to the downside is only a counter trend move, price should find support at 2270. Now, the beauty about that is you've got daily breakout support at 2272. Hood at 2270 is where a counter trend move to the downside would end. So that becomes your possible entry point. Now, let's say you take a day, you take a trade on that and make sure you use proper stops and everything. And price starts closing below 2272. It does it for more than two consecutive sessions. Well, then what that's telling us is price should pull back to 1871 to 1943 out there. Now, on hood, just to make sure, the monthly chart has got a confirmed TD9 count top. So does the weekly. The daily has a confirmed road momentum indicator signal there. So I wouldn't step into this just yet. I'd really want to see what happens as price gets down to that 2270 area out there. So, Yvonne, I hope that helped you out with regard to Hood. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Now, as price moves back to those areas, feel free to write back in. Happy to take a look at this again for you. The last question I have at this moment coming in from Rye inside our Tiger's Den is to take a look at Tiger's Civil A. U R A U R and uh, you're, you so you get an average cost of 370 yesterday uh, was a uh, well two days ago was a confirmation of a road momentum indicator top so maybe this came out with earnings I don't know uh, but you got that top that was in place here and then what uh, transpires the very next day a gap to the downside that gap to the downside was nothing more and probably with volume volume on this yesterday as an example was 23 million shares. Last time was down on this area was 15 million shares. And that last time was what created that TD9 count breakout level at 497. 
497 is the level that you want to watch. Why? If price gets below that, odds favor you get back to the 340 area, and you don't want that when you've got a nice trade here and a nice profit. So watch 497. That's the daily time frame. The weekly time frame is going to go ahead and confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. We have a key reversal bar. Right now, we also have a bearish engulfing candle. Price has tested, though, and rejected that green oscillator and change line. Again, suggests caution, but that's a bullish signal at 556 as long as that level holds. We're at 5, 559. You mean three pennies, Stevie, makes a difference? Well, it does in my technical work out there. But if we close below that level, uh, that's going to say, hey, be careful here because you could actually get down to 340 then. That would be the next level of support on a weekly time frame at this moment in time for AUR, Aurora Innovation. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Folks, we get back to it. Now, Aurora Innovation, by the way, should further its rally today. Why is that, Stevie? Because you've got a TD nine count top for the 30 minute time frame that has been, oops, has been negated. Tried to show it to you, but I think I went ahead and actually closed it out accidentally. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So no requests that we've got in the uh, at the moment, and we're in the last segment. Two minutes to go here, two-minute countdown. Speaking of two-minute countdowns and trick-or-treats out there, did you watch that uh, uh, Jets game last night? 
I guess they got a treat out there uh, as they actually won. Would they go to maybe three and six out there? In any event, let's take a look at the ES Mini. So the ES Mini, the daily time frame, what we know is that price closed below the bottom of its daily profile yesterday. And today we've rallied right up into that level, that level being 5802.50. If price closes above that level, 5802.50, yesterday's move to the downside was a false move to the downside. However, if we close below 5802.50, that's going to suggest we see lower price. And that lower price could easily take us back to 5470. If we look at the five-hour time frame chart, the actual confirmation that we're headed lower would be a close below the low of the day, actually last night at 2300 hours, that low being 5732.50. So just note that on your pad of paper out there. If price closes below that, we're definitely headed lower with that 5470 being a price target. On the uh, five hour and the four hour time frame, though, you've got those nice TD Nank out bottoms. But what we can also see as of 11.55 a.m. is the top of those profiles have acted as resistance. 57.99, 57.87 would be those levels. Two hour time frame chart, I don't have a bottoming pattern out there. My price does have a profile change in trend. Your resistance for the day to the upside is 58.15.50. That's the 60 minute uh, TD Nank out breakdown level. If price is able to close above that, we should see a further move higher. If we go take a look at, just to finish things off, let's take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound. We, we, found the, we saw that the U.S. dollar index found support at the bottom of its profile. We don't have profile levels for these uh, currency pairs here. Uh, but what we can see is it looks to me like that the euro wants to do is move back towards the 108 level. If it does that, it'll get weaker. U.S. dollar index will get stronger out there. And we are at the end of the show. So, folks, thanks so much for all your assistance this week. I want you to have a fabulous Friday and a uh, fantastic weekend out there. I will return at 11 a.m. on Monday, 11 a.m. sharp. So have a terrific weekend, folks. Be safe out there, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.